What's up, you guys? It's Cody Steck. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another interview. In this one, we're going to be talking to Frank here, who has implemented the tactics that I've talked about here on the channel before on how to implement YouTube for your real estate business and how to start selling houses uh, from those YouTube videos. This is something that I've been doing for about three years. Frank reached out to me maybe a year ago or so and said, Hey, I need a little bit of help with uh, YouTube. You know, what should I do? I've made some videos, but haven't really got some traction. I kind of just said, Hey, keep going, do this, do that, don't do this. And uh, sure enough, he took action and uh, we're going to hear a little bit about his story and uh, learn a little bit more about what he's done to find success with that. And then he'll also share, share some, uh, you know, some information about his YouTube channel. If you want to check it out or Instagram or whatever, I'll let him figure that out. And, um, you know, I think that'll be a good way for us to provide some value back to real estate agents in the field um, who are looking to grow their business with uh, YouTube and, uh, you know, TikTok, any of those other platforms as well. I think we'll maybe touch a little bit on that. But uh, yeah, Frank, thanks for being here, man. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I just want to jump into, you know, a little bit about like that backstory. Tell us about like when you got into, build, uh, into real estate, mm -hmm. how you got business right off the bat. Like what's that backstory look like? Backstory was a struggle. So I got licensed uh, end of 2019. And then I signed, or not signed, but I joined a local brokerage here called JP Goodwin. They're kind of mid-sized. They're not quite Keller, but they're not quite boutique. And um, I got into it for the autonomy because I had a lot of jobs before that where I just hated being told what to do. Um, and I got into it knowing that if I performed well enough, I could have freedom of time and freedom of money, of course, if that went well, because I don't really come for much money. Parents weren't rich or anything like that. So it was a lot of just me trying to make something happen for myself. So I got licensed end of 2019. Um, and then when I got licensed here, you go through this training through the brokerage as well as after your testing. And, um, and you have to, it takes weeks. You're going to some Austin board of realtors building downtown. And, and so by the time I was actually in the field, ready to start generating business and shadowing open houses, I didn't even know how to do an open house or learn how to do cold calls, COVID hit. So that you know, I don't know how it was in Utah, but we could not do any open houses for quite some time. Yeah. And then, um, so I really didn't even start doing my own open houses until I want to say June or July of 2020. So I, just like thought I lost six plus months. Um, and so I spent probably the latter half of 2020 doing everything they tell you to do, um, doing cold calls, which I would quickly find out I could not stand just wasn't my thing. No disrespect to people who kill <laughs> yeah. it on cold calls, but like my business partner, who I'll talk about a little later, um, that's his thing. That's his bread and butter. He could cold call all day. For me, I just felt gross. I didn't like it. And I would do open houses again and again, twice, like Saturdays and Sundays. I'd make them eight hours. And I got maybe one client in months. That probably wasn't my best strength too, because other agents absolutely kill it with open houses. Um, so I was getting desperate. I had a, a very finite amount of savings tucked away um, on top of all the fees that you pay to get into the business. And so I was getting nervous. I was getting desperate. I was already thinking of quitting, um, which wasn't too attractive because you work hard to become a realtor and you spend a lot of time and money to get licensed. And then you find out not only is it not working out, but I didn't really like it that much. I thought, well, I like helping people. Sure. But this is not really what I thought it was going to be. So that was a tough thing to, to grasp and to accept. Um, and at a point I got so desperate that I was just asking people, what should I do to get more business? Should I pay for leads? Should I do that? And, yeah. um, and that's when I met my eventual business partner, Caleb, who's just about my age. He's under the same brokerage at the time. And uh, he was starting a team. He's very entrepreneurial minded. He got a he majored in finance and economics. And so he was already the type to do cold calls. He was handing out his business cards. He was the realtor that I knew I could not be. It, it was just in his DNA. So I thought, okay, why don't I get close to that guy? And um, so I did. And you know, I was working with him, doing cold calls with him, knocking on doors with him, stuff I didn't like to do, but yeah. I was so eager to have success that I did what I could. And then eventually I was doing that for a few months. And then around December of 2020, uh, he gets a hold of this YouTube thing that people are starting to do. And he said, Hey, Frank, check this out. You might be good at it. And 
I dove into it. I learned what I could. And I realized that would be something absolutely I could be good at. And I always had an interest in being on camera and speaking. Um, long before real estate, I was exploring broadcast journalism and the media and PR. Um, that's much more my speed. And so it fit like a glove. You know, I thought, you know what? Um, I'd rather teach myself how to make thumbnails. I'd rather teach myself how to edit and do all of that instead of cold calling. So I really committed. I bought the cheapest green screen I could find. I used my iPhone. Um, but I tell you, man, as you can recall, it took a while to get going. And uh, you really feel the, the hours, the days, the weeks, the months when you're busting your butt uh, and nothing's happening which is when I thought, okay, well, if I just reach out to the other guys that I learned about this from Jackson and Jesse, they would just be like, yo, just crank up your production, bro. Just do more of this. Or So I thought, okay, I forget how I stumble upon you, but I found you on YouTube. Uh, similar in age to me, you're not some 40 something year old guy who's going to be a little out of touch with, with where I'm at in life. So I reached out to you and you were nice enough, not just to answer me or acknowledge me, but to give me tips and you sent me screenshots of your analytics and um that gave me hope that went a long way because i was i wouldn't say depressed but it was month three four five six no reach outs no nothing the channel was slow to grow i'd heard of other people getting leads just in their second week of doing this or closing their first deal in the second month and i was half a year into it and i was like what you know i'm still not getting paid so it was really scary and i was on the ledge and, um, and yeah, you, you, um, I know for, for you, it was probably just the Tuesday and some dudes reaching out and you're like, Hey, hang in there. But for me, it gave me the confidence I needed because I saw that your channel growth and trajectory was very similar to mine and not as comparable to some of these other channels that just exploded from the start. It was a very slow growth. And so when you told me to keep at it, that's what I did. And I also had no choice. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, all of a sudden, um, I want to say it really started picking up in terms of reach outs that summer, um, especially heading into uh, the end of the year. And then as soon as January rolled around of this year, popped off. Um, yeah. And it's a, it's a success. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. I mean, so a couple things that you hit on that I, d I just want to kind of highlight and talk about myself is uh, you mentioned, you know, you tried the cold calls, the open houses the door knocking, all those things. And those are things that definitely work, but it kind of has to fit your personality. You have to really be good at it and actually right. learn how to be successful at it. Right. And sometimes there's just not that in your DNA, right? Like for me, I did not want to call for sale by owner. I called one in my entire career. And <laughs> it was, it, it was like, of course, at, at the time it was like terrifying, right? Like, Oh, I'm going to get rejected. Like you go through that as a new agent. Um, yeah. But then I just realized, I don't want to do that. These guys are trying to sell on their own. I actually, as a real estate agent, have the opinion that, yes, some people can sell their house on their own, right? Just like some people can file their taxes on their own or, you know, <laughs> represent themselves in a court of law, you know, not hire an attorney. Um, not everybody needs a real estate agent. That's just my honest opinion. Um, and so I was That's like, true. I don't want to, I don't want to try and convince these guys that they need my service when maybe they don't. Um, and yeah. so I did that same thing. I, I went through the open houses, the door knocking, the cold calls. I finally landed on like Facebook ads because those were, those leads were somewhat warm, you know, at least they were yeah. interested in real estate. Um, yeah. and I found success with that. I did that for about four years or so, four and a half years. And, wow. uh, and then I just got burnt out, man. It, it was just too much. It, uh, it was killing me. So that's how I got into YouTube. And, um, I felt like that really kind of fit, like what I was trying to do. I'm actually not really a creative person. Um, but I, for whatever reason, kind of enjoy being on camera. I kind of enjoy being like, I guess this maybe sounds egotistical, but, uh, I like being like the center of attention and in, in a sense of like, <laughs> I, of like education, right? Like I like to educate people. My videos are very analytical. I like to go through stats and I just kind of share what I'm interested in, what I'm researching, and this is all stuff that I'm doing anyway, right? So if I'm looking at market data, um, I'm going to be looking at that information anyway, just to you know keep up on the market. I might Absolutely. as well film a video about that and put it out there. So um, I mean, that's something that, that has kind of fit me. And it sounds like that's exactly your style. And the thing that I love about YouTube is like you said, when you start out, it's really slow. I mean, my channel, I was getting, uh, you know, 
three views a day. And then it was, and then it was five views a day. And then I go up to 12 and then it was back down to two, you know, and I'm like, oh man, this is like a roller coaster. And, and you do see those other channels just pop off and start, you know, going crazy right off the bat. And that wasn't me, you know, it, it doesn't sound it's like it was you. Um, yeah, and it's very discouraging. discouraging. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, I got kind of lucky because I started right before COVID. And so COVID is actually good for me and my channel because a lot of people relocated because they're now working right. from home. So, um, that was good for me. I kind of had a little bit of a runway before that happened uh, with the YouTube videos. And and like you said, I mean, as soon as it starts to hit, it really grows exponentially. You know, right. it, getting those first 10 subscribers is harder than the 100 and 100 is harder than a thousand. Right. And now, I mean, I was at maybe 2000 last year. I'm already at like 5,200 this year. Um, nice. so it's kind of crazy to like see that. And I don't, you know, say that because it's just like, Oh, I'm amazing. And I just figured something out. It's just that it's no. it easier. The, the longer you're in it, the more consistent you are. Um, it feels but, good when you work hard for it and you, yeah. and you know, the, the pain of the first 50 or the first hundred. Yeah. I went from 1000 to 2000 quicker than I went from zero to a thousand. Yeah. Um, and that's just how it goes. Yeah. What does your channel look like right now? How many subscribers do you have? Uh, I want to say shy of 2,500, which wow. is pretty modest, but um, yeah. works for me. The thing about Austin is it's such a saturated search term in the first place. And um, I wasn't the first, but I was one of the first channels in Austin like this that started, but I'm far from the only one out there. I mean, there's a guy who's, who has it like dominated. He has 10 to 20,000 He's killing it. Um, so he's the McDonald's, right? But I thought, well, who, who is it? I'm, uh, Jeremy? Jeremy Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy Knight. He's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's in my broker. He's, he's a good buddy of mine. So I know him. Really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I had a lunch with him one time just to sit down, um, pick his brain. He's pretty nice. Um, but he, he has his own style too. Because you yeah. were telling me your style is more market data. Yeah. And Jeremy's more like, um, I say this with respect, but like, like tabloid headlines, like is yeah. Austin dying right now? Yeah. Um, and then for me, I kind of do it like talk show style. Like I'm, I'm kind of like a Ellen or a Letterman. That's, you know, I'll do some market data or, or talk about the housing crisis, but really I'll just talk for 30 minutes about Leander, Texas and, you know, or the suburbs, that type of thing. And that's more yeah. my speed. So yeah, the channels, it's healthy. It's not it never exploded and never popped off, but it's been steady. And as you mentioned, exponential. So I'm happy at 2,500 subs if we're closing, you know, 10 yeah. mil in production by June. Yeah. And end dude, of June. So that's, that's phenomenal. Is that 10 mil just this year? Uh, January through June would be 10 mil in production. Yeah. Woo! yeah. Let's go. <laughs> uh, this time last year, I could barely pay for gas. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it makes it sweeter when you, when you yeah. come from such a contrast of, uh, of lifestyles. Yeah. yeah. So, so here's a couple of things that I love about YouTube and I, I can tell you've had the same experience with it just from what you're saying. So the thing I love about it is there's a lot of different ways to be successful with it and it doesn't matter as long as it kind of fits your style. So like, you, like you said, Jeremy's kind of more like tabloid headline type stuff. I'm really yeah. analytical. And the cool right. thing is, is especially lately, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and they're like, Oh, I love those. I love those market data, you know, videos you do like, and they just connect to that. They really uh, enjoy right. that. And then there's going to be yeah. other people. I mean, there's a guy in Canada who absolutely crushes it. He does these really high quality videos, uh, just mm. showcasing houses, kind of like these listing tours. And I mean, he's crushing it, you know, put, picking up a ton of business, million dollar houses left and right. And, uh, you know, it's just been really, really good for his business. And it's, he doesn't do any market research. He doesn't talk about the area at all. He doesn't do pros and cons. Right no vlog videos. I mean, it's strictly listing videos and he crushes it. So there's so many different ways to to be successful with it. And that's the thing I love about it. And the second thing is uh, with YouTube and, and this is like, you know, a good thing that that you kind of said, you said Austin is like so saturated. Well, I think most major cities are going to be pretty saturated with realtors on YouTube. And then in the coming years, I mean, it already is. But the cool thing about it is when you're, if you're getting, if you're just being consistent, you keep putting videos out there, you keep getting views, you're going to get people who are like, you know, attached to you as opposed to John or Sally or Sarah, you know, the next person, right. They're going to attach to you because they like your style. They like, you know, the, the way you present the information they like, you know, they feel like you have confidence in yourself and know the market. Right. 
and then they reach out to you, you know, directly. So that's the cool thing about YouTube is like anybody who's reaching out to you already knows you, likes you and trusts you. And so it's an right. easy sell. I mean, it's probably one of the easiest sells ever. You're like, yeah, sure. I'd love to help you buy an $800,000 house. Let's do that. You know, it's yeah. like relatively that's, easy. That's how, you know, you flipped it upside down is when, you know, you're taught to beg for business and to yeah. bust your butt for business. And then you get people asking you, Hey, can you please help us? Hey, we'd love to work with you. And so yeah. that's, that's pretty sweet. And to your point, they feel like they know you and they watch, they binge you like you're a show basically. And, um, and yeah, they, they, what you'll notice is to what you mentioned, people, you just kind of naturally vibe with, I think personalities, like you attract kind of how you are in your clients. Yep. And so for me, in addition to just my own style of like talk show, like talking head videos, um, another thing on my channel that is very prominent in every single video is blunt, abrasive honesty. So I'm, I'm not saying Austin is perfect in this and that. I, yeah. I don't know if I can curse, but I'll, I'll, I'll for poop it. on Austin sometimes. I'll shit on Austin. <laughs> um, and I'll be honest and I'll say in the videos, like, I'm not trying to discourage anybody, deter you, dissuade you, but this is the reality. It's great. People love it here, but you've got to look out for this. And so sure enough, in a lot of the emails I get or phone calls, we've been watching multiple realtors on YouTube, but we chose you for your honesty. We chose you for keeping it real and not trying to be sleazy or gross. So yeah. that's something I'm, I'm good at just in my own day-to-day -day life. I'm pretty um, unapologetic with just my own filter. Yeah. Um, so I, I put that in my videos and people connect to that. They, they feel how genuine I'm being and I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to sell them anything. If anything, I'm talking them out of it, but they respect that. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's my own style. And so, yeah, that helps with, with why people choose me. Cause I had to, I had to figure out my own thing because I'm in my mid to late twenties. A lot of these cats on YouTube doing this are established realtors. who have been in the industry for 10 to 20 years in their thirties, forties, fifties, sometimes sixties. Who's going to listen to the dude who's in his twenties you know, and, and take them seriously. And I was worried about attracting only renters or people my age, which I still do. I still get a lot of calls from people out of college and, yeah. and I don't mind that. I like it too, but I had to do something to stand out and attract people who were going to be older than me and take me seriously. And that was a struggle yeah. and a fear. Um, but I think the key, and you'll, you'll find this with yourself, as long as you're providing value, that's, that's it. You know, as long yeah. as you're giving them something of, of, of worth, they're, they're going to subscribe. They're going to watch, they're going to call you. Yeah. And they keep coming back. And that's something that I hear in my business too, is uh, people reach out to me and they're like, yeah, you were so honest about this. Like you, you said that this sucks about this area or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, like, it's just the honest truth. You know, like I just, I just spit facts and people really appreciate that, you know? So like, I try to even just to be, you know, ethical and stuff. Like I try to remove my opinion from it and just say, here's what the data says. Here's what the facts say about this area being better right. than the next one. And people really appreciate that, even though they may not want to hear it, you know, or they may not, uh, you know, when you're in person, you, you avoid that a little bit of that confrontation about like being honest, but it's like on video, like you just tell it how it is and uh, people yeah. are really attached to that. And that's a cool thing about it. Absolutely. So, it is. Tell, tell us a little bit about like your, uh, the back end of, of how you shoot videos. Like what are you doing to plan them out, to film them? edit them, give us the, the structure from, from start to finish. Okay. Um, so every Sunday rolls around. I, I usually choose Tuesdays as my filming day. That's my own version of discipline where if I can just stick to a day. Yeah. So, um, and I'm someone who this is my own choice. I do not outsource anything. So a lot of people who do what we do, they'll have an editor, they'll have someone to make the thumbnails, they'll have a videographer, they'll buy all kinds of equipment and stuff. It's for me, it's, it's just only me. Every thumbnail has been mine. Um, and so on and so forth. So, uh, basically to the start of the process is really, um, Sunday comes around and I'm thinking, well, shit, I don't have a video topic. I hear of a lot of agents who, uh, do what we do and they have it in weeks in advance. They batch record and I'll do that sometimes if I'm going to go on vacation somewhere and I know I'm going to be gone a week or two, I'll batch record. Sure. I'll, I'll buckle down. But generally um, I just kind of wait till a day or two before to start really picking my brain and I'll look over what I've already done. I'll look over what, what people are doing. 
Um, and most of the time I'll get an idea of the video. So once I have the idea, um, then I uh, get my trusty notepad here and I just start rattling off um, bullet points. And that's kind of how my videos are. Like I'll say up next, we're talking about schools and schools will show up and it's very segmented that way. Yeah. Um, and so for each bullet in my notes, it just becomes not a script, but how my videos are structured too. My videos are basically a video version of my notes. Um, and that's something I don't want to call it like a, a gift or a skill, but I'll call it like yeah. a, a trait. Maybe I'm good at just rambling yeah. um, and not senseless rambling. It'll make sense. It'll have value. But if I write down the, the crash in my notes re regarding the market crash, I can, um, I, and it's come with practice, but I can talk five, 10 minutes about it. Yeah. Um, and just, and just elaborate. So that's what I'll do. And then when it comes to shooting day, um, I'm pretty basic as mentioned, it's literally my, my iPhone. I don't have a fancy camera. I recently bought this, uh, cause I just moved and it's a wood floors. Everything's echoey. Um, so I just have this mic. I have a ring light that my phone is in right now. I've got my, uh, MacBook here. Uh, and I just whoop, press record on my phone. Yeah. Talk, 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 talk cut um check notes check notes do it again talk 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 uh and then from there i just um pretty basic just export it to the macbook um load it up in my editor um and then i usually edit another day i'll space out my week so i'll have a shooting day an editing day knock out a thumbnail um yeah. and then seo with youtube and then it goes up on fridays and i just do one a week um in the beat in the beginning, no. In the beginning, I had the sense of urgency to build a foundation. So I was killing myself in the beginning. I was doing two to three a week. And yeah. mind you, two to, two to three at the time that were at minimum 25 minutes up to 50 minutes. I was doing really long format in the beginning. And then three of those a week. So I was killing myself. And then I dialed that back down to two. And then once I saw that the channel was built, I had a foundation and it was growing. Um, then it, it's a okay, now it's, it's like you take the training wheels off. So now it can go, it has momentum. So I dialed it back to one a week and I've been doing that now for about a year. Um, yeah. And it's worked that's, but for me though. Every market's different, every channel's different, yeah. but um, that's what I found that works. Yeah, I love it, man. I mean, it, it's, it's really, you kind of just mentioned this. It's really a pretty straightforward, easy process. I mean, there's not a whole lot of, you know, crazy stuff that goes into it. It's like sit down, yeah. ring light, which is like 30 bucks on Amazon. Your phone, yeah. you know, your microphone, you can use AirPods or whatever to get started and you mm -hmm. hit record and you, you, you know, you're off to the races. So I think it's one of those things that a lot of people overthink and they get in their head about yes. being on camera. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, sure. You know, the first couple of times you record yourself, it's like a little bit weird, but once you're, you know, I, I don't know how many videos I've done between all my different, you know, channels and stuff. I mean, I'm probably seven, 800 videos, if I had to guess. Wow. Um, yeah. And you know, you just get used to it. You're just like, yeah, like you're yeah. on camera and you're talking and you hear yourself talk and um, it's not a big deal. And, and so I think maybe you'll find this too. I've gotten to the point where I'm very much the same way. I, I have some notes about like a title of a video and then I'll just spitball a six to nine minute video on that one topic. And then I actually outsource it for my editing and stuff. Kind of like you, you mentioned other people do. Um, yeah. and, and that really saves me a lot of time. I can get a, a pretty good high quality video out, um, you know, in maybe an hour. And so that's something where yeah. I've kind of really tried to double down and, uh, do more of that. Um, you know, cause I was in that same boat at the very beginning, I did like three videos a week and then I went to two and then I went to one for like almost two years. And then just recently I've actually ramped it back up and I'm doing between two, maybe three per week at this point. Um, just because one, I've gotten quicker at, at filming Two, I'm outsourcing the editing and then three, um, you know, there's other agents on the up and up here in my market. And I'm trying to, I I've got the number one spot right now and I don't want to nice. lose. That. So I'm just doubling down, doing more content. Um, I actually just hired a videographer to come on and, and help me full time with this type of stuff. Um, and you know, I want to be doing like three, if not four videos per week, every single week. Um, wow. which is a lot, man, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's when yeah, you can help, do it it's easier. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Outsourcing is a beautiful thing. I, I think I'm just so, um, it's like a baby. It's like, a 
no, I want to edit it. I want it to come out my way. I might, I'm not saying I'm a great editor or even that I'm great at thumbnails, but I have control yeah. over that. And I know when sure. you outsource, you have the final say, you can direct them, you can make it, you could still have control, but I like to be hands-on with. Yeah, with I get that. I mean, when I started, I was the exact same way. And, and I think, right. you know, if that's what works for you, then sure, go for it. You know, if you hired yeah. some help, sure, you could do more videos, but like, maybe that's not what you want to do. So um, mm -hmm. this is something you can but, do for yourself or yeah. outsource it, you know, but I think for other realtors who are looking at doing this, you don't really have to overthink it. Like just, just start filming, very good, figure very out, good you, know, point. you can pay somebody 30 bucks to f edit a video and away you go, you know, start posting. That's a very good point. And that's, if we're talking to people who are maybe considering starting this, then I'll get my blunt honesty out of the way first. It's not for everybody. And this is exactly what you said in the beginning. It might be in your DNA to cold call or do open houses. It might be in your DNA to film or it straight up might not. So some yeah. people, if they're scared to get on camera, that might be a hurdle that they simply have to overcome. But at the same time, let's be honest, maybe it's just not right for you. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but what, the thing about real estate, regardless of what your niche is, how you generate business, you got to find what you're good at. And that's yeah. at least a, a, a pro about real estate is, you can be good at many things. There are different, you know, I, I suck at cold calling, but I'm good at videos. You might be great at cold calling, but you suck at videos. It, it just, you just got to find what works. Like uh, my business partner, he could not do what I do. I can't do what he does. So yeah. that's why we partnered up because I generate the business. He goes and closes it. I couldn't write a contract for my life. He knows <laughs> the ins and outs. So you yeah. gotta, you know, it's good to also, like you said, even if it's not outsourcing, but getting help, um, having people do what you're not good at and you doing what they're not good at and synergy. And um, yeah. so I would encourage people too. you know, if it's cool to go it alone, but if you have anybody um, who could join this with you, do it. And then to your point, um, <clears throat> And once you get over the hurdle of just being scared of being on camera, it, it really is not something to overthink. I, when I was getting into it, I was thinking, man, I'm going to need the best camera. I'm going to need the best microphone. I'm going to need the best music. And I was so in my head about everything. Um, turns out you can do it that way, but you don't have to. I'm yeah. the proof that you can have great success. As mentioned, 10 mil closing by June. Um, with just a phone and a ring light and a green screen until literally three weeks yeah. ago it was all green screen. Yeah. Um, now it's, you know, so yeah, if you're on the ledge, if you're, you know, on the fence and watching this um, and you needed a sign to do it, here's your sign, go do it. Yeah. <laughs> just get a camera and practice. If you want to just, you know, start a video of yourself and get the jiggles out, get the wiggles out and, and then delete it and then, you know, loosen up that way yeah. go for it. And, and be rest assured, I'm sure you can say the same thing. Your first video, your first 10 videos, even your first 30 videos are going to suck. And that's okay. Yep. It's part of it. Everyone's first several videos are not that good. My first video, I, I watched it when I edited it and I haven't watched it since because I want to jump out of my skin. So yeah. if you can not resist that, if you can accept that and lean into that, um, you know, you know, the law of non-resistance just just jump yeah. into it you know yeah absolutely man i mean you brought up a lot of good points there it's it's all about getting started and the thing is like nobody cares you know when you make those first videos some of those first ones i made still pull in you know each individual video will pull in 30 to 50 views per day and they're terrible videos the audio sucks mm -hmm. the lighting sucks i'm like terrible on camera i mean it's just not a good yeah. video but people still watch them every single day and they still perform and um, yeah. you know, so it doesn't matter what type of content you're making. I mean, the first videos are going to suck. And, you know, you brought up a good point about how you have your business partner who goes out there and like helps you close this business. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's fantastic, right? Because one thing that I think a lot of agents miss is, uh, well, I should actually say two things. Number one is they forget that selling is the whole purpose of this business, right? This isn't about making the best website or making the best videos even, or the best business cards or letterhead or whatever it may be. It's not about that. It's about selling real estate, getting people to come into your world, watch your videos, do, you know, interact with you in some fashion and then go out there and close business. So if you've got somebody who can work the business, I mean, I think that's genius. That's actually a transition I'm making in my own business. Um, at least that's a goal, you know, over, over the next couple of months is to outsource a lot of that, uh, the actual like hands-on stuff with real estate, because I'm good. Right 
at videos. I'm good at lead generating. And that builds into my overall vision, which I think yeah. a lot of agents need to have, especially if you're younger and you've got a long runway in this, in this business is um, mm-hmm. building a brand, building a brand around who you are and, you know, being on social media, being on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and all these, whatever platforms you want to be on uh, to be able to, uh, you know, really build something around Cody or around Frank, you know, and have something there that people can, um, you know, they're, they're more so watching you than watching because they want information on Austin, Texas, right? They just like you. They like your, the way you present things, whatever, right? Um, I think that's so critically important. It's going to help you in a downturn. Um, and it makes business so much easier when you've got that because people then start reaching out to you and it's, uh, dude, that's like life-changing. I think that's probably one of my favorite things about YouTube is like high quality leads and they reach out to you literally like begging to help, you know, for, for you to help them. Right. The highest quality. I mean, yeah, you get your renters and you get people who are hoping for a miracle. Like, Hey, can I get something for two fifty in Austin? Like, (laughs) no. Um, but most of the time, high quality leads and, and what types of clients are relocating in the first place, people with concrete jobs, relocating for work, they're getting promotions. So always pre-approved, always fancy budgets. I mean, we just got our biggest fish, um, in the past week with a four meal budget. And that's, Woo! you know what I mean? And that's, so, you know, it's not all the time, but, but you, yeah. you get high quality, higher quality leads than I ever got doing open houses or doing cold calls. Um, and to, uh, to answer some of your points, um, one of the points was it doesn't need to be perfect. And that's very true. The original videos that still get views that were so bad, something to keep in mind. And this is something that I was hung up on that I had to let go is people, it helps if your videos are well-produced and high quality, absolutely. But people aren't expecting that in a real estate video. They're not watching Hollywood. They're not on Netflix. They know it's going to be amateur. As long as it's not total crap, they won't mind that much. I mean, yeah, if you can improve this or that, absolutely. Never stop making them higher quality if you can. But that's something that, that I think people need to hear is that they're not watching for a great production. They're, they're wanting to learn something. And then if they like you, they'll stick around and keep watching you. Um, yeah. And then to another one of your points, yeah, the outsourcing, it's funny because you outsource parts of your video creation. I outsource anything real estate because that's when I learned that I don't actually like performing real estate or being on the ground, boots on the ground in the field. And yeah. so um, from the beginning, it was a 50-50 split with me and my partner for every commission. But the beautiful thing is when business really ramped up, he was too busy. So we hired another, we had three, we were too busy with them. So we hired another. So now we're growing a team and then I'm collecting my percent of every closing while all I do is make videos. And, yeah. and, and that's the beautiful thing. It's scalable and YouTube, God forbid, Google disowns it or something. It's not going away. Yeah. So when I'm 37, someone's going to watch a video I made from a decade before yeah. And reach out to me while I'm, you know, probably having kids or out, you know, in Hawaii sipping a mimosa or something. So it works for you, yeah. which is a beautiful thing about, about YouTube. And, yeah. and um, so it'll be around. I mean, the, the videos will stay and the more you make, the more people watch. And, and uh, it's, it's almost like a 401k. And I say that loosely. I'm not trying to directly compare it. But when you really understand that what we do stays and is as easily found just by searching pros and cons of Utah or best suburbs of Salt Lake City or something like that, um, they're going to find videos that are old. It's good to stay updated and keep making content so they know you're not just a dead channel. But that's that's why it's a 401k because you and I could be doing whatever we want to be doing in 10 to 20 years and people will still be calling. And because you can scale it, eventually you can have the infrastructure of someone answering your phones for you or someone doing the home tours for you to where eventually you can be at a point where you're either retired or you can be as involved as you want to be. So that's where my mind is at right now. How can I continue to scale it and um, eventually just kind of have this running yeah. as residual income? And and then yeah. once you save enough, you, you can start yourself investing in land and growing your own finances and create your own generational wealth that I did not have the fortune of growing up with. And so it's a beautiful thing, all from a $30 ring light and a $50 green screen, um, you can do that for yourself. You have to commit though, as you mentioned, yeah. but 
that's for me, that's a beautiful thing. People ask me what I do. I just got this sweet apartment and it's one of the, the nicer ones. And so I met a local and they expect me to be two or three times my age. They say, what do you do? Like, what would you do for a living? And I just say, I make YouTube videos for real estate. Yeah. So it's pretty sweet. I don't say that in a braggy way, but to really, to anyone watching this, who's on the fence, get off the fence. If you can do it, do it because it'll, um, in one year, it's changed my life. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't take that much time. I mean, I was in that same boat and it's gotten better every year. So I think you're going to be in that same position where your business continues to grow and get better and better every single year. Um, one thing that came to mind while you're talking about that is, you know, when I look at other types of like lead generation and stuff, the thing with YouTube is it's so good that I don't understand why somebody wouldn't do YouTube, right? Because you've got evergreen videos they can last for years and years and years. Like you said, uh, once you create the video, it's already in a place where it takes maybe, let's say a couple hours to film it, a couple hours to edit, you know, put it together, whatever. Let's say you're into it six hours, right? Well, once you put that six hours in that video continues to work for you. It's not like cold calling where once you stop calling, you stop, you know, generating business, generating interest. Right. Right? So it works while you sleep. Yeah. And then people reach out to you and these are high quality leads. Like I said, no lead source is going to be perfect. Um, it's not like you're, you know, hundred percent or are perfect, but last time I checked for my business, I was at about seven and a half percent close ratio. So, wow. uh, you know, compared to like Zillow or realtor.com, if you're buying leads there, or even, you know, Facebook or Google ads, I mean, you know, those sources, you're lucky if you're closing one to 2%, uh, with YouTube, I was closing seven and a half percent last time I checked. If I didn't wow. take any new leads, just with the leads I have in the pipeline, I'd probably be closer to like nine to 10%. So it's wow. incredibly high. The, the number of leads that come through are really, really good. Um, my, my price point was before YouTube, I was actually about a hundred. My average price was about a hundred thousand dollars below what the market was now, mm -hmm. because I'm pulling in these higher leads with good jobs, good credit, you know, whatever my price, mm -hmm. my average selling point is about a hundred thousand above what the median is in the market. So Hey, congrats. Uh, That's amazing. You know, so I'm, I'm selling more real estate, more volume, bigger commission checks. It's easier. I mean, everything just lines up to where, you know, and this is like, this is not a pitch, you know, like I, I get excited about it and it, it make it sound yeah. like a sales pitch. And it's like, I have nothing to sell. I mean, I'm just here talking like, about, we're YouTube. not making money here. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we have no, it's just good. It's something. Yeah. It's just something that's been life-changing, you know, for me, for you as well. And I, I just wanted to share that with people. Um, so I appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming on to this and, and chatting with me a little bit here. Um, anything else you want to add? Where, where can people find more about you? Uh, just YouTube. I mean, I, I, I don't, for better or worse, I've neglected TikTok, Instagram. I, I just do hundred percent YouTube only organic. I don't promote it. I don't pay for shit. Um, if they find me, they find me. So I would, I'm one of the many living in Austin, Texas channels. Um, but if you want to find me just living in Austin, Texas, Frank, and you'll see my face. <laughs> so um, that's, that's it. I, I'm not really going to, I have nothing else to promote, but I appreciate I love it. it man. Yeah, that's cool. No, that's awesome. Um, if anybody has questions about YouTube, real estate sales, anything like that, I'm, I'd, I'd be happy to, you know, field calls from that. You can find my information in the description box below. Maybe if Frank's open to it, you can reach out to him, ask his opinion. Um, of course. You know, I don't, I don't want to volunteer you, but uh, you know, please if, do. I think that's something that uh, people would find yeah. value in. So if you're watching this and you got questions, I mean, reach out to me. Uh, we're obviously both very busy, but you know, yeah. reach out to either one of us. And we'll try to help you if we can. And absolutely, uh, Cody was there for me, and I want to be there for for the next me. So you know, sure. we help each other. Yeah, for sure, dude. Pay yeah, there's, there's plenty of business out there for everybody. Even people in my own market, I give them tips. I tell them what to do. I tell them, you know, whatever, because I know at the end of the day, they're not going to perform at the at the highest level like I do. Um, nope. and so I'm not, I'm not worried about that competition. And even if they do, let's say they go out there and they make videos, uh, they're, they're only going to attract people who don't want to work with me. Right. And I'll never know Bingo. about it. And that's just fine. So that's the thing. Yeah. They'll go with you if they like you, if they don't like you, you wouldn't know unless they leave yeah. a comment, but yeah, that's the thing. That's, it's like choosing where to eat. Some people prefer this, this burger joint. Some people prefer that burger joint and, uh, yep. you get people who want to work with you as you mentioned. So absolutely. Great. man. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on, Frank. My pleasure, bro. Thank you so cool. much. Thanks.